Whew. Hey everybody, what's happening? Sammy the Thrifty Brewer coming at you and happy homebrew Wednesday. Tonight we're going to be kegging and bottling the first brew of 2017, which is the Pacific Pale Ale. As you can tell, it's a little cold. It's a balmy minus 16 right now. Going down to a balmy minus 19 tonight. So I was actually smart. I got things sort of organized earlier today. And uh, yeah, we're home from work. And uh, got the heat on in the old brew shed. Let's see how things are, shall we? Let's make it happen. Okay, so yeah, it is currently sitting at 46 degrees Fahrenheit in the brew shed. Ignore the stuff behind me. Uh, the missus had a huge event on the weekend and this is the result. So sometimes the brew shed becomes a bit of a dumping ground. So we're going to have to make, make some plans. But isn't this festive? It's like holiday time in Bracebridge. So what we're going to be doing... Um, yeah, Pacific Pale Ale, did, uh, uh, did that on the 16th with you guys. Pitched these with USO 5. It seemed to take forever uh, to uh, have the cars and drop, but I equate that to uh, cold temperatures. I mean, the fermentation chamber was working well. We had some cold days, we had some warmish days. I mean, warmish being, you know, above freezing or below freezing, just hovering around that mark. So it wasn't too, too bad. So we're going to keg that tonight. I got my fully cleaned and sanitized keg sitting right there. I also promised Jake from Soda City Brewing a six pack, as least I can do, from the, for him donating the hops to the cause. We'll take a little sampley poo and uh, see how it tastes, and we'll go from there. So come along with me and we'll uh, make this happen, shall we? I'm looking forward to this one. Actually, I'm yeah, kind of intrigued to see how it's uh, smell is great. Intrigued to see how it tastes. Should be, uh, should be all right. Okay, so we got our six bottles filled. We're just in the middle of capping. And those of you guys that don't have a bench capper, you got to get one. I mean, it makes life so much, so much simpler. It's not even funny. So basically, we're capping as the keg fills up. And, uh, yeah. Don't fear the foam. Do not fear the foam. It's going to overflow for sure. We got about eight, eight liters or so left to go. 21 and a half liter batch, basic, is what I ended up with. So I was pretty pleased with that. So here's some capping footage. And it's oh, one of these days, I'm going to have a dedicated capping area. Maybe not necessarily in the brew shed, but you know make life so much simpler and yes all the bottles are sanitized the caps are sanitized everything is nice and clean and there we're done so that's basically six bottles of the Pacific Pale Ale they're done and dusted and the keg still filling up nicely we'll put that back in there why because I've got room it's all good. So now what we'll do, well, we've got uh, it's a bit of sort of a bit of a, a one-shot deal here on a glorious but frigid Monday evening. That's how the Pacific Pale Ale looks. Cloudy, but you know what? It is what it is. So we'll grab our napkin of doom, set her down here, we'll take a gravity reading and see how we're shaping up. And I'm hoping that we're sitting, you know, low tens, low to medium tens, I'm hoping. Eh, should be good. Should be good. Okay, here we go. And overflowing, why? Because I didn't plan with the time, with the turd. And we're gonna just take you guys over here so you can take a little looksy poo little so meniscus and we're sitting at 10 oh look at that 10 oh 
two, four, six. We'll call that 1006 off the meniscus, which makes me happy. So I called it right, which is cool. And look at that. Fear in the foam. Don't bother. It just means all the sanitizer is working its way up top. So we'll take that off and that'll go into uh, frig. It's going to go there for now. But yeah, we're just going to uh, get the rest of this going in. We're going to use our uh, high tech, high tech system of raising the siphon off the bottom and all that little bit of tasty goodness in there. I know I'm not going to fill the keg because I got uh, six 330 mil bottles there. Yeah. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Almost there. I'll tell you the one thing though, the one challenge I have in this shed is remembering to put the sanitizer and the water, which I have in spray bottles here. I usually put it in the fermentation chamber, but I totally forgot. What are you going to do? Yeah, look at that. That's cool. And we're empty. So now what we're going to do really, really simple. You guys have seen kegging videos before. We're going to snap our clean and sanitized lid. Get that drain off into there. That's going to go up into here. We'll get you washed and cleaned tonight. Because I'm going to let the heat run in the old brew shed for the evening. So I can thaw out the mash tun and the uh, oil pot because it's an absolute freaking disaster. I mean, if I can give you guys any advice, it is to uh, clean up after a brew day and not put it off, especially when you're living in cold climates. Okay. So I've had this soaking in sanitizer. We'll get the lid on here. And we'll get that snappy pood down. Nice. I have no idea how many liters are in there, but keg feels pretty darn heavy. Which is a good thing. Okay. So now, without further ado, so you guys have been asking me how this has turned out. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. So this was all locally sourced, locally grown uh, Pacific hops. Or Pacific hops, Pacifica hops, whatever you want to call them. So it's going to be a bit of a mystery. I mean, the smell was great when it was fermenting. So cheers. Here we go. It smells good. Let's see how we go. Cheers, everybody. And thanks for watching. That's kind of cool, actually. Um, I'm not going to toot my own horn because it's going to need some time to just sort of hang out and mellow a little bit. But, I mean, it's got some really neat, um, mild citrusy notes to it. Um, <coughs> really hard to put your finger on what they are. There's a definite citrus there that I really, really like. I think on gas and with some time, it's going to almost like pop, like be almost sort of like effervescent, which I'm hoping that's what they were going for. So I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. And I will have no qualms giving that to a brewer, professional brewer, um, and get his feedback on that because that is really friggin' sweet. That's, oh, I'm happy with that. It just goes to show you that with a little bit of time and the right ingredients and some patience, you can make some kick-ass beers. I mean, it's important not to rush things. We've all done it. We've all rushed things. You know, say, oh my God, the keg's empty. We got to get something in there. But I urge you to uh, take your time because that, that's pretty decent. Yeah. I'm not going to say I nailed it because uh, it would be a really cool um, because there was just the Pacific hops in this or Pacifica hops, if you will. I think it'd be really neat with like some Belma, get like a little bit of strawberry in there, maybe some Citra, 
get a little bit more citrus punch. And it, it would work really, really well with uh, like some dankness, maybe with like uh, some Simcoe or someone's going to give a little bit of pininess to it. And use this as the aroma hops on the back end of the boil. But yeah, that's uh, huh. sweet. I like it. It's not overly dry. It finishes pretty clean, but without having any um, gas and some time on this beer to let it really flavor to develop, I think we're going to call it a success. We're going to call it a success. I mean, it's no. Laguna sucks brown sugar substitute, which is a beer, you know, all of its own. That's not too bad at all. So let's just figure out our ABV. So we had uh, 1040 to start, finished off at 1006. Let's just put the numbers in the old Beersmith mobile and see what we get going on here. That's all oh, my feet are freaking freezing in here. I'm going to stand by the heater. Okay, brewing tools. Alcohol and attenuation. So we got 1040. Just off at 1006. 4.4 ABV. Couldn't be more pleased with that. That's perfect. That's awesome. I wasn't going for anything really crazy, big, massive because it's a really, really simple grain bill. Um, I did post the recipe in the previous video of the first brew of 2017. So if you guys are interested, make sure you check that out. But yeah, I mean, I will gladly share it. It's awesome. I will gladly, I have no qualms in giving this to somebody who works at a brewery. As I know, I know he's going to give it to the head brewer. At least I hope so. It would be really cool to get some feedback on that. All right, so anyways, that's me done and dusted. I apologize for being crooked for the evening. That's sort of a bit of a fly-by-night sort of deal. Now, what's happening this weekend? Like I said earlier, I'm going to be doing two brews this weekend, hopefully, time permitting. Um, got some parental responsibilities that are first and foremost, one needs to attend, one needs to fulfill prior to brewing, because brewing, in my mind, has always been secondary to my family. It's always going to be that way. Yeah, which is the reason why I'm doing this on a Monday night, because nobody is home right now. They're on the way back from the arena, from skating. So I've got a little bit of time so I can crank out the video, get her done, edited, and uploaded for Wednesday. But anyways, I'm rambling on. This this weekend, I'm going to be doing, like I said earlier, a Red Racer IPA clone. And then I'm also going to be doing my very first um, Dunkelweizen. And I'm really stoked about that one. Red Racer IPA clone, I'm really excited about as well. But I've had the beer before. I've had a couple Dunkelweizens before as well. But I'm excited to try one all together because it's a whole new style of beer that I've never done before. So I'm really looking forward to that. IPAs, I've done them many, many times. But this is a, one of my go-to IPAs when I can't find anything else to buy. That's why I always purchase. So yeah, did we win? I think we did. So anyways... If this is your first time watching any one of my videos, I do encourage you to like, subscribe, and share the video. Video, Get it out there for the world to see. Do you do, do what you want to do? As some people say in the UK. Anyways, this is Sammy the Third Brewer saying, if you're going to do something, do with a homebrew. Most importantly, please be safe out there, everybody. And be sure to keep calm and brew on. Cheers. All the best. We'll see you again. Cheers.